Hello there everyone and uh, welcome to Overgrowth Weekly 85 and uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm Lucas Oshvan. I'm Anton Real. I'm David Rezin. <laughs> Peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today is a special uh, question and questions and answer episode with uh, David Rosen. So we have had the community ask a bunch of questions on the forums and uh, we're gonna go through them, and uh, David are going to answer some of them. But before that, let's just like have a little talk, shall we? Okay. Sure. So how are you guys? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> David, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the most interesting things with me is I'm doing No Shave November, and I just got a new dog two days ago. Oh, really new? <laughs> yeah. What what kind of dog did you get? She's a small dog, like 10 pounds, and <laughs> <laughs> about one year old, and she's missing a leg. Ah. Uh, so. Front or back? Front, left. But she gets yeah, around pretty well. It's amazing how uh, a lot of dogs that I've met that have three legs are very uh, um, mobile and, uh, yeah really do kind of get around, so. Mm -hmm. And what have you been up to, Anton? Um, <clears throat> I've been working a lot. This week I participated with uh, Cheeseness in a seven-day FPS that uh, <clears throat> none of us really got done as much as I think we wanted to get done. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but it was fun. It's it's an interesting project, and we might still try and and finish it at some point. It's um, we did a FPS that's a text based adventure style, so you run around like it's an FPS, but it's all just text describing where you are and where things are with a compass along the top, and uh, so a lot of room for sound effects and music and stuff like that. It's kind of kind of cool. Nice. Um, and you? That, that sounds very special. Uh, yeah, uh, I've been just doing school as usual, as per usual. School, school, school. Been uh, finishing up the uh, space shooter project that we had, and uh, we're gonna start the real time strategy project soon. So that's what I'm doing. Cool. Sounds fun. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just, before we get into the questions, how about we just like talk about where Overgrowth is right now in development. Uh, so like, what's, what's uh, the current state in the, of Overgrowth, David? Um, well, I we just brought on Jill Ogle to help with level design. Oh. So that's helping move forward in that direction. I kind of keep getting distracted by things like animation that I'm particularly <laughs> interested in, but I'm hoping I'm kind of like shifting towards gameplay and levels cool. as much as possible. So you said you had brought on uh, another person for level design. Mm-hmm. A gym because she's made a lot of small projects before, and I thought their design was cool, so I thought that would be helpful. Cool. I didn't know about this. Did you did you uh, announce this before? Uh, not really. I was going to talk about it more in the upcoming alpha video, which I'm in the process of making. Cool. How, how long have you guys been collaborating? Maybe a month. I don't really have a very good sense of time, so it could be <laughs> slightly more or less. And um, are the, the levels being designed primarily campaign levels or just test levels still to, to check out how the engine handles level design? It's mostly kind of gameplay test levels at this point. We're trying to figure out like what levels are fun so we can then move into like putting them together into the story campaign. I see. So are these test levels going to be available in any of the upcoming alphas? I think so. Not in this next one, probably. But I think I'll start including them. Okay, uh, it's uh, you know at least to me personally, I'm curious to see the um, 
the types of levels that succeed and the types of levels that fail. Because <laughs> um, certainly from the community, we've seen a lot of that. Um, but those don't necessarily have the long-term effect that, you know, sort of company-designed levels would have. So, um, Yeah, I definitely keep track of those also and watch iDub's TV show. Oh, yeah. And things like that. Is um, when you when you watch the shows, I know that a lot of people do sort of combinations of exploration and parkour. Um, it, does it seem like those types of maps are more um, going to be more prominent in the game, or or maybe a mix of those plus combat? Because um, it seems like community level ones tend to be more about exploration than about combat and I could be wrong but that's kind of the way it feels to me I, I think we'll definitely have to mix it up a big part of that will we'll be having different kinds of objectives to incentivize like interacting with the characters because when you're the rabbit character it's really easy to escape from enemies right now and just avoid fights so I'll need to give them skills to counteract that like a tackle or like grab like in Lugaru and things like that should help Right. control the player's movement a little more yeah i've been uh, i've been thinking about that because um right now it's kind of unfair because the uh, rabbits can jump high and uh a lot of the other races can't and that's that's pretty much the only difference between them so it's kind of unfair <laughs> <laughs> they're also experimenting with different characters so it might not always be a rabbit like if you're a dog character maybe you can't jump very high and you're very powerful yeah. so that would incentivize a lot more combat Exactly. Right. Um, so, someone on the forums. Let's go. Let's get to the questions. Maybe uh, Dave Escape is uh, talking about weapons. He asks if you're going to add more weapons, or are you kind of happy with the amount of weapons in the game right now? Um, I think we'll definitely add more variations on the existing weapons. So we don't want to have just like one spear, and we also still need a staff without a spear blade on it. They don't want to have any steps back from what was in Lugaru. I wanted to, Lugaru content to be like a strict subset of Overgrowth. So it's the only one, like the only class of weapons that I'm sure we want to add, but we're still thinking about other ones. Cool. What other types of weapon classes have you considered? Aside from bow and arrow. Yes, <laughs> I was thinking that too. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely heard people asking about that. So that's something I think about. But who knows? And there's <laughs> there's like linked weapons, like flails or nunchucks, but those are a little bit challenging to animate. Right. Yeah, could be interesting with some like physics. Clubs, too. Yeah, they're a bit more physics based, maybe. Hard. We also don't have any axes yet. Right. So those are categories we might add, but might not, depending on how things go. Cool. Makes sense. Um, so Enderparis asks, uh, what should be considered when deciding between custom engine or getting an existing one? Has the situation changed since you started making Overgrowth? Not strictly a Overgrowth related question, I suppose, but uh, still interesting nonetheless. The situation certainly has changed a lot since then. Like the options at the time were like paying $500,000 for Unreal or maybe using Torque for $100. But now we have Unity and Unreal Engine 4 for like $20 a month, which is kind of crazy. So I'm not sure if it makes sense for a lot of people to start a custom engine. But at this point, I have a lot of experience making custom engines, so I don't know if it would necessarily be faster to learn to use an existing one than to just keep on working on a custom one. Yeah, it really takes, you need to know a lot about, uh, a lot more stuff in order to make your own engine, that's for sure. Now, you've always felt like the the Phoenix engine is very, um, sort of exclusively designed for overgrowth. Do you still feel like that's going to remain the direction of that engine? It's starting to get a bit, bit more flexible, because I'm trying to move as much as possible into the scripting. Like in this upcoming update, I moved all of the procedural animation into the scripting so I can update it all live. And that'll also okay. allow 
Walter is to have pretty drastically different animation too. Yeah. And and with with the more animation you have, the more variety it feels like the game has. Is that true in terms of combat? Yeah. Like it's if you use the same animations, then you'll end up just having a character who looks different but does all the same things. Right. So some of the bigger custom characters have new animations, which makes them pretty different. Oh, really? That sounds exciting. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be seeing more about that when the, when the uh, alpha comes out. Yeah. This next alpha is going to be mostly about um, animation and, and other tech, as well as Jill's custom levels. And just talking Very a bit about how we're moving forwards. Very cool. Um, so, talking about like custom characters and uh, other characters than Turner and making them better and so forth, um, uh, Slyken asks, besides Turner, who are some other main characters you have planned? And uh, maybe not main characters, because that would be spoilery, but like, <laughs> do you plan on actually making... Will the player play other races than the rabbit race in the uh, full like, campaign and stuff? Yeah, I think you'll definitely include other playable characters besides rabbits. But I don't want to talk about it too much. Besides that, I think we'll see some of the characters from the comics coming back. Awesome. Uh, and those comics, by the way, they're available on wolfrider.com slash comic, right? Or like wolfrider.com, mm -hmm. something like that. Someone can post that link in the chat for others. For others. Uh, cool. Well, and having having characters from the comic certainly gives a lot of potential backstory that you can play off of in terms of the the story for the you know I mean both initially you have that that place going in but then also um, something to build on pretty easily right yeah it definitely gives some starting places to go with the story right. And and is it because um, it's never really clear since Turner never interacts with any of the characters in the comics? Are they? Do you have you guys decided? Are the events in the comics parallel time wise to Turner's story or related at all? Or is it is it just sort of the happenings of the islands? We're still keeping that pretty flexible. Like we have a lot of okay. ideas for the story that we're not totally sure if we want to go with that or not, like going forwards or backwards in time. I know, like time travel, like just where the story is showing. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That makes sense to me. Yes. Um, so Endopairs asks, as a community member, I feel like the lack of public development updates has driven people away or into activity. As a game developer... Um, he is still in awe of the reach you managed to get with a blog, a forum, and hard work. He'd like to hear about community management, especially how much time it takes away from development. Well, at first we had Jeff and John on board as basically like full-time PR web marketing type helpers, or partners rather, <laughs> but they've since <laughs> moved on to do Humble Bundle full-time. So that's left a lot more work for us to deal with. So we've kind of slowed down a lot on communication. But part of why I'm participating in the show today is to try and get back into that. Cool. And um, we, we talked about doing this on a semi-regular basis. Um, do you feel like that kind of constant outreach would be um, beneficial to your time? Yeah, I think so. And also this particular format is helpful because it's just like one block of time as opposed right. to doing like a, a blog post every day or other things that we've tried in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That whole blog post every day thing, for how many years did you do that? Do you remember? <laughs> uh, my sense of time, like I said, yeah. doesn't really work anymore. It was for a long <laughs> time though, but... Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm, it might have been two years. Yeah, I, I think it's something like that as well. Like, how much time did you feel like that took? Like, a blog post in general? What, what the time um, did you expect that to take for you? 
It varied a lot. Like some of them I could do in a couple hours, and some of them would take like a day or two. Like the really epic ones, like OpenGL versus DirectX, comprehensive history, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and two two days of blog time is two days of non-development time, mm-hmm. right? Which means two days that later that the game will finally be done. <laughs> exactly, and um, you still have to. I mean, at that time you did the weekly alpha updates as well, so that means that meant that you also had to have some sort of. Um, significant progress on the actual game to show as well, right? Right. So that would sometimes influence development to kind of encourage this tendency I already have to kind of work on fun, flashy features versus more like road gamey stuff. Mm-hmm. Because like there are a lot of games that have been made with really great level design, so it's really interesting. But in some ways, it's not breaking new ground in the same way as like procedural animation might. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like that has negatively impacted the game now later on, that you did implement all those features early instead of working on, like I said, wrote gameplay stuff and so on? I think the game is better for it, but I think it's negatively affected people's expectations about when the game will come out. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm <laughs> trying to focus on the levels and the gaminess part. Yeah. Cool. Um, and one last thing, like the big things are like working, working with the game, the blog posts, and then we have the alpha videos. Like, how much time would an alpha video take? Would you like think roughly? I usually devote a whole day to an alpha video. It doesn't necessarily take all the hours in that day to do it, but it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Cool. So I think that answers that question quite well. Um, Good. Let's see. There's a couple of interesting questions that just popped up in the chat. Um, um, so we, we sort of talked about um, weapons already, and we, we talked about flails, how, how they would be difficult. But some of the other weapons that are already in the game, like the rabbit catcher, which is sort of a pole arm as opposed to, say, a spear, are pole arms going to get custom animations at some point? Well, the spear has custom animations, but I want to extend it so that it's more effective at like catching people out of the air. Because right now, the jump and the jump kick are just way too powerful, so I need effective counters for that. And polearm should be really great for that, because you could just stick a spear up and like plant it on the ground and you're, nobody can jump on you. Mm-hmm. Right. Makes sense. Um, do do you feel like that's um, uh, enough uh, to counter that? I mean, if you still have like hand to hand combat and they don't have a weapon, isn't the rabbit kick still overpowered then? In that case, yeah, I want to try a lot of different things to try and deal with that. Like in multiplayer, you can basically counter it. Like you just move backwards and then you punish them as they land. But the AI doesn't know how to do that yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that could be one AI. response. Yeah, exactly. It's adding moves and tweaking weapons and changing the AI. I think it should be doable. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I was going to say, the other, the other two things that were mentioned in this, this question real quick, um, are there any planned weather effects and also um, the amphibians and reptiles, are those going are are other i mean i think we've talked about how mammals evolved in lugaru at some point um what other species also evolve i think that non-mammals are still in their existing form so we probably won't see any like lizard people like in soul caliber running around that would be cool but i think that would be a different game (laughs) Mm -hmm. right I like playing as the lizard in Cell Caliber. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. That's a different dog than mine. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a dog up the up the hill here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Um, um weather effects and for then, sure. Yeah. Weather effects are an easy way to add variety and it'd be really fun to code. 
but I just I feel like I should save that for a little later. Well, you, we saw that you started putting in the the volumetric shaders, right? Like uh, fogs and things like that, and that helps lend itself lend itself to weather effects too, right? Yeah, that definitely helps with that, and helps with level design a bit, just to make different areas look different. Right, especially if you are you are you guys sticking with the multiple seasons versions of levels that Aubrey was doing before. <laughs> um, I'm still thinking about that. We haven't really nailed down much of the campaign progression yet. Though that was definitely okay. an original idea that he had. Right. To have like a seasonal progression through the game. Yeah, that's a. I think that's a really cool idea. It reminds me of uh, like Half Life, for instance, and Half Life Two. They have the thing where I don't know if Half Life did it, but I don't know Half Life Two did it, where the time progressed. It's like, I think it progresses during like three days or something in Half-Life 2 and first it's like day yeah. and then there's night later on and so on. The Last of Us might have played out that idea for a little while. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see how it goes. That had a pretty explicit seasonal progression. Yeah, like yeah. Like each yeah. chapter. Exactly. Cool. So so those questions were from uh, Marco Kina <laughs> in the chat. Um... And Ace8280 on the forums asks, are you planning to um, like make armor actually act like armor, or instead of being just aesthetic? Yeah, that's certainly important. Um, I think it should definitely kind of make sharp weapons act like blunt weapons if you have like full armor and various things like that. And if you want to actually penetrate it, I was thinking the attacks would be kind of slower like you would need to stun them or something so you can actually get a knife like through openings in the armor cool. though i haven't worked on that much yet it's just planning out the design for it yeah so how does that work by the way with the is is there like locational damage and stuff right now how does that entire thing work well the script has access to where any impact is occurring but that's just not connected to the armor yet so you could probably add the armor system entirely through scripting at this point. I just haven't done it yet. Cool, cool. So, let's see. Um, uh, should we start rounding off the show here, maybe, Anton? What do you think? We're going for almost uh, half an hour now. Right, this is about the length that we, we... You know, we were talking about sort of half-hour long shows, and that seems about right, right? Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's still definitely sort of a slew of questions, right? Yeah, shall we take two more then, maybe? Sure. Fine with me. Cool. So, um, uh, Ace, still, Ace8280 asks, uh, how often do you just play your game for fun? Um... Sometimes. Like, sometimes when I'm get getting frustrated, I'll play in the arena for a while to remind myself that it's worth it. <laughs> that's the main fun thing to do right now, I think, aside from making your own levels. Yeah. Like, uh, how does that work for you when, uh, in general? Do you... Like, when you make a game, because it feels like when you make a game, maybe you get so... Uh, like, you made it so you know it so well, and maybe you don't feel like playing it even, because, you know... It's like work. Do you feel uh, like that in any way? Yeah, sometimes. Like, sometimes it's hard to even see doing anything on the computer as fun. So <laughs> even though I think PC games are way better, I tend to play console games more often just because it feels like not work mm -hmm. in that way. But I still, it's still fun sometimes. <laughs> And it still it never gets old just making the characters fall over with the Z key. Yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot too. <laughs> That's a big update in the new alpha, is the ragdoll physics are just drastically more accurate and faster. Awesome. Uh, did you have a, a qu do you have a question loaded, Anton? Um, well, no, I, I just saw there was a new question from 
Akazi about um, you saying, would you ever do uh, custom juggle bones? I don't know what juggle bones think, are, but... I think it means jiggle bones. Jiggle, jiggle bones, probably. Um, he says, let's say if a custom character has cloth or something like that, would it be possible? Is this possible now, or if not, will it be possible anytime soon? It's not possible yet, but I was definitely looking into that. Like right now, it's pretty... The scripts just check for, like, tail or ears. But someone was mentioning that they wanted to add, like, ponytails to a character. And that doesn't work with the ear logic, because the ears keep on, like, looking around in different directions now. <laughs> and that's pretty weird if the ponytail starts doing that. Yeah. So oh, I'll definitely man. work on that at some point. And I was looking into the built-in cloth physics in Bullet, which would be the easiest way. Right. right. There's always that tension between, like, working on fun, cool stuff like that and, like, trying to make progress. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess a lot of these, these sort of questions sort of, uh, maybe we can sort of wrap up on this, is um, if you have sort of an overarching plan currently, you know, for, um, you know, because it feels like there's still a lot of ideas that you want to try and you want to explore. Um, and I know a lot of people are sort of, you know, especially people that seem to have come into this newer, more recently, they, they're they begging for a game. And so, you know, the question is, are you, um, is, is there a plan of any kind to kind of, you know, <laughs> move yeah, into that plan. next phase? There's a plan. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you talk about it? I guess is the question. Well, I'm kind of just trying to gradually break the habit of working on frivolous features. <laughs> maybe frivolous isn't the right word, but maybe like non-essential. So I'm trying to kind of st sh start shifting towards a more critical path approach and also looking into getting more people on board. Like Jill is working out pretty well, so maybe it would be possible to hire more people. Like I was thinking... It'd be really cool to have global illumination baked into levels, but that mm -hmm. could be like a several month project for me, and it's probably not worth delaying the game another few months. But if I could hire someone for like specific tasks like that, I'm definitely looking into options like that. But yeah, I guess it's not totally nailed down yet, but I'm definitely going in that direction. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, that's the end of uh, the Q and A session. And so, yeah, thanks you very much for for coming, David, and uh, yeah, Anton too, for that matter. <laughs> cool. Thanks yes. for setting everything up. So the idea is that we'll try and do this every other week. Is that the idea? Just to kind of keep a community outreach. So, um, if you guys have more questions, please post it in the forums, and we'll. Um, we'll try and get to it on the next uh, the next session. Yes, yep. uh, I will make a new thread. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Sounds good. Bye. Thanks a bunch, you guys. Bye.